live from our studio in Babson Park, Massachusetts. It's the Fred Obi Show, where we unpack history to positively impact the future. I am Fred Opie, your host. Thanks for joining us live or listening to the podcast. In the case of the Commonwealth versus Daryl Jones, a judge ruled Jones had not received a fair trial and overturned his murder conviction. Now almost 50, Jones served 32 years in a Massachusetts prison for a crime he didn't commit. State prison officials released him in December 2017. I interviewed him about the experience of incarceration through the lens of food. I decided to entitle this documentary Joint Genius because it illustrates the gifts, creativity, and soul that those in prison employ to eat with dignity in an undignified space. In my book, Hog and Hominy, Soul Food from Africa to America, I define soul in part as surviving with dignity. In part one of Joint Genius, Daryl Jones talks about what he described as famous prison meals, the nacho meal and the tuna fish sandwich. Before his description, let's take a look at the history of the nacho chip. In high school, I could best be described as a Doritos junkie. Doritos came on the scene as the brand name of the chip I grew up eating in the Hudson Valley as a kid. Other companies produced a generic product that we all consume today called nachos. Arch West introduced a modified Mexican tortilla chip, which he called the nacho, to the U.S. snack food industry. Born in poverty in 1914 in Indianapolis, Indiana, West joined the Dallas-based Frito-Lay Company in 1960. While on vacation in San Diego in 1961, he purchased some fried Mexican tortilla chips at a roadside stand. The experience inspired him to develop a market for it. What became the brand name Dorito based on the word Doridito, the Spanish word for little golden, Frito-Lay Company took the traditional Mexican snack food and added coloring and flavoring to enhance it. In 1964, they released a product in Southern California where it became a hit nationally in 1966 to the Ray reviews by customers around the country. Over time, the company developed a number of flavors. Today, Doritos represents Frito-Lay's second best seller after Lay's potato chips with annual revenues at approximately $15 billion a year. Now on to Jones' story about the famous nacho meal in prison. So I'm an historian, Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about the number of slave narratives that I have studied where enslaved people being hungry was a way of life. And they subsidized their diet by what they could steal from the owners, what they could grow. It is that. That's what people try to separate it, but it is slavery. It's handcuffs, it's orders, it's communication has to be underground railroad. 13th Amendment make sure of that by saying that other than servitude, this whole thing is set up. Say that again to people who didn't understand the 13th Amendment and its relationship to being incarcerated. This is something that gets amended. A person cannot be held in right to liberty and your liberty can't be restricted unless in the case of servitude. Meaning that unless we incarcerate you, and that was the method of like, yeah, unless, then you can go back to slavery. So you're Mm. out of slavery unless, and where are we now? The unless, the prison system. I understand that institutional food from perspective of being in a hospital usually is not very good. Being in public schools are usually not very good. You know, everything in the prison is bland, and they turned everything over to a soy element. What was used to be a hamburger when I came in 85, you know, and, and first coming in throughout 86 on was a hamburger. A prison version, but a hamburger. Today, it's a soy burger. Everything, they've mixed that in. So what happens is we have canteen, which is supposed to be the supplement when you're really making a complaint that you know, we're barely eating because the trays are so small, brother, would starve. So they actually sell various items in the canteen. It depends on what jail you're at. But they sell items, so potato chips, chili. And they deal with particular companies, right? Sort of low end. The chili may come in a little pack that you rip open. They're selling things that I probably showed you. Most of them, you'll be like, what is that? But, you know, they may have tuna. Might not be bumblebee. It's going to be seal pack. Anything that you rip a top off, is coming seal pack. Instead of Charlie tuna, this may be a hood tuna. 
he ain't got no um, hat and none of that right there. The guy that saw that package, <laughs> you know, he, he, his pockets is hanging out. He's just there, like, take me. That's the brand. Keefe is actually one of the main companies. Keefe. Yeah, that, that sell it, you know, mostly everything. Rip open type of thing that you would give your kid to go to school. You know, the highest prices you could think of. Everything's triple whatever it is out here. Roman numerals is a base for everything. They corner the market because you can, the soups are 40 cents. It's the cheapest item. They corner the market. It's just cheapest items. So guys that don't even really get money can afford to get those. So a guy will go and buy 40 Roman numerals and it'll go in everything except coffee. How are people generating the income to be able to go buy stuff, food stuff? Well, the sad part about it is that many of the brothers have no income. The prison jobs, the guys who normally work in the kitchen cooking and doing all that are the poorest guys people that are incarcerated because the kitchen job normally the guys who have the less don't get no income because they can make them they can work average guy be like, i'm not working in that kitchen doing this all day and cleaning that floor and it's work and then you got to serve guys and you don't know what's going to happen to you because you know this is messed up that's messed up the food guys are like man you work in there you know what i mean so guys no one's jumping for that job it's, it's sad but that's what's going on so let's say you're getting five dollars a week if you're not doing natural life, they split that. So two fifty have to go into savings, and you spend whatever. So let's just say at most somebody made ten dollars a week. At most, those guys they're not going to be buying a lot of canteen. It's canteen expensive. Their bag may have four items in it, and then the rest of the income is coming from guys' families because you can send money. So that's the majority of the people who really get to spend. They have someone outside that send them finances. Is there a limit to what I could send to an incarcerated person? Actually, no. Uh, how do you send prisoners money? It's changed the system now where you go to MoneyGram or something and you have to go through this new company. They just changed all these regulations. But before, you could just mail a money order, write a check, or bring cash and just put it in the box. And then they pick it up the treasurer's office out front. Mm -hmm. And then they put it in your account. I heard how prisoners are meeting their food needs, nutritional needs within institutions, the creative things they come up with so that their food actually tastes good and meets their needs. So one of the famous meals in prisons is the nacho. So what happens is you buy your own potato chips or tortillas, whichever one they're selling, and brothers will take that. And we got these little tub cheese. In the max, they have squeeze cheese, so they come in a little small squeeze cheese. And... Brothers will lay that out, got a garbage bag, boom, because that's your base for your nacho meal because you cut the bag up into little squares and then you can lay out your nacho meal like it's an entree and take Roman noodles as a soup, the base. And you make the Roman numerals and you, you, you put it all you know, on your little tray or your bowl and you'll put the chili on top of that and you'll cut up your little pieces of meat. They sell little small meats. You'll chop that up. And then, you know, the delicacy becomes when you add that chili on top of it and then you just throw more, you know, your tortillas or Doritos, actually something like that on top of it. And then you take that tub of cheese and you melt that and you throw that on top. And that is preparation for like Sunday's game. You know, that's a special meal. If Sunday, if a game is coming on, half of the jail is making them a nacho meal. And if you're making that nacho meal, you're basically the man. And some guys are real good at it. See, that's a wrap for this show. Thanks for listening. To hear more content like it, go to fredopi.com. If you have questions about advertising and sponsoring this show, contact us at fdopie at gmail.com. That's fdopie at gmail.com.